Okay, so we're looking for appendix C. Appendix C will have thermodynamic quantities for selected substances at 298.15 Kelvin. You will notice the far left column is delta H, which we've already used. The middle column is delta G, which we will use. And delta S naught, or snots, are the third column to the right. Are you with me? So this is a two-column, three-column thing. No, nope, two-column, four-column thing. Page 1059 or 60. What? Well, I'm going to write one on the board. Actually, I'm going to find one on my computer. And hello, Trevor. Let's see here. Thank you. I made it myself. Yeah. Okay, here you go. No fighting. Think of Trevor. All right, here we go. Using the standard entropies in Appendix C, calculate the standard entropy change or delta S naught for the following reaction at 298. If you need a value, I will give it to you. It's, it's like the last test where it's in a box. Yes. All right, so here is our answer. Trevor. Uh, 180. So where did we get this to? Where's that two come from? All right, the two in front of AL, because it's products minus reactants, correct? All right, and then the three from the water, and the three from the H2. We okay with that? Yeah, you would just flip it. Uh-huh. Okay, good. Um, I don't know what's on the next page. Probably no problem with an answer. There we go. Oh, can't do this one yet. It's right there anyway. Whatever. They're all delta G's now. So let's do one more just for practice. So let's let's find the change in entropy for the combustion of propane. I well is C three H eight on in this table. Okay. So C three H eight burns in oxygen or combusts and it makes CO two plus H two O. Will you find me delta S naught for the reaction? Okay, take a couple minutes to do that. Okay, so how do we do? What, what number do we end up with? How many have 101.22? Raise your hands. The entire front row and Shaw. Now, I was pretty comfortable with that until Shaw got it right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was so happy with myself until that. I'm sorry. Actually, am I sorry? 
I mean, if we could laugh. Just kidding. 277.5? I'm proud of you, actually, too. So, well, we better work through it. All right, so two, that makes this a six, that makes this an eight, that makes this a ten, which we got to divide in half, right? One, five, three, four. It's not. Don't get angry. So the sum of three times whatever that number is going to be plus four times whatever water will be. And then we have minus, right? Correct? All right. And then we have 1 times whatever C3H8 will be plus 5 times whatever oxygen is. Okay, now help me out. What is CO2? All right, I can't use my shoulder. Hold on. All right. 2.13, he said. Oh, oop. Okay, that's ugly. Um, what is water? 188.83. And then propane is what? Point nine. Don't fight, it's okay. And then five times oxygen, oxygen is? All of that, we yada, 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 we add that together and we get, what was the answer? 110? 22? Okay, will you? This is a positive value, which means entropy is doing what? Increasing. Will you talk to your lab partner about how, like just looking at it, you would know entropy is increasing? Have a talk. What? Sure. Whatever you feel good about. Uh, Entropithia sounds fantastic. <laughs> okay, give me one reason that the equation shows you it should increase. Okay. Say that one more time. Isn't that the opposite of what we want? Big breaks into small, is that what you just told me? Okay, yeah, bigger is actually more complicated, so that doesn't work. But over here you have more moles. Did you have something else, Wood? Yeah, like propane in your tank is liquid, but in the equation that would be gas also. All right, so the majority, the only way to really know this for sure is more moles, and then in the problem, it might tell you delta H is equal to like negative 48 or something like that. That would also indicate to you that this was, it, it wasn't there. But if it gave off heat, the entropy definitely increases. All right, so the, the increase in moles is the number one way to look and know that entropy should increase. All right, are we sort of okay with this? All right. So now let's go back to the other. I have two presentations open here. So entropy changes. It's just the math. Now this is going to lead us into this delta G. So here we go. Heat that flows into or out of the system changes the entropy of the surroundings. Hold on. This is delta S of the surroundings. That's what this thing is equals negative Q of the system divided by T. Now, you don't have to do that math for, just wait for a minute and it'll all make sense. Well, 
I can't ever really promise that everything makes sense. Is that him? I did not realize, but I knew that kid 15 years ago. Like, I've known him forever. I didn't even realize it was the same kid. I knew his mother. Ooh. This is game day, I think. I don't know. He's growing on me. But anyone that does that, like, little circle game where they punch you if you look at their thing, yeah. they're tools, in my opinion. Like, grow up. Okay. That was all recorded. It's okay. Trevor is not a tool. Okay. Never mind. He is. So here we go. What this is all going to mean is this stuff. So the universe, oh, uh, what? Yep. One, one thousand. Okay. Now, the universe, was that enough? Dang it. <laughs> I was so excited to biscuitize him, and he biscuitized my biscuit. Now a verb. Entropious. Entropious. Okay, so the universe is composed of the system and the surroundings. Therefore, the delta S of the universe is equal to the delta S of the system plus the delta S of the surroundings. For spontaneous processes, delta S of the universe is greater than zero. We've already said this, have we not? <laughs> it is the sun of Earth. Okay, this becomes mathematically... Oh, this is so good. Oh, my... So, <laughs> delta S, about thumbs down Sunniverse, is equal to thumbs down the system plus multiplying both sides by mailbox T, mailbox T delta S universe equals that. Oh my. All this, this is all just like the der deriving stuff. So, it doesn't really matter if we don't have this, besides that it's awfully cute. Here we go. So, delta, negative T delta S universe is defined as Gibbs free energy or delta G, which is important. Where delta S universe is positive, DG is negative. Therefore, when DG delta G is negative, a process is spontaneous. So, so far, everything we've learned that's important is delta G. If it is negative, it means the thing is spontaneous. Bonitius. <laughs> well, sometimes I get ahead of myself. That's supposed to say spontaneous. So the reverse would be that delta G, if it's positive, is non-spontaneous. That means you are at equilibrium. Oh boy, where'd we go? It's lost. I hate when it does this. I remember equilibrium means that the forward and reverse reaction rates are happening at the same time. Okay, you must be able to know and apply these three statements. Okay. It's all chemistry. Yes, it is. Yep. When we cook, we're just arranging atoms in new ways so we can 
disarrange them to get the energy back out. All right. Good. That's a deep thought by a deep thought on biscuits by biscuits. All right. I wish that my pointer would come back. There we go. All right. I just said this. If delta G is negative, the forward reaction is spontaneous. If delta G is zero, the system is at equilibrium. If delta G is positive, the reaction is spontaneous in the reverse direction, or it's non-spontaneous as written. Now, delta G will be able to be determined in more than one way. Is there like, I feel like that was worthless right there. I don't know about you guys. Like, what the point? All right. Um, analogous to standard enthalpies of formation are standard, standard free energies of formation or delta G naughts. Delta G naught is equal to Uh, crap. I'm pretty sure this is sum again, but it's not a raindrop. I have no idea what these are. So that's the same exact equation as delta S naught was. So it's the same math. Just find the values in the table, multiply them by their coefficients, add them up, and then subtract the reactants from the product. Okay, so we ready? Now we can do some of these and yeah, I remember. Their answers were already on there. And how to do them is already on here. Boom, now it's not. Alright, A by using appendix C, calculate this. B, what is delta G for the reverse of this reaction? So how about it? All right, did anyone have negative 1102.8 kilojoules? Okay, wh whatever. Are we okay with that? All right, so then what would part B be? All right. Whoops, not point oh two. Okay, so here's my question. Is this spontaneous. So raise your hands if you think this process is a spontaneous process, the part A one. Okay, and you are correct. How would you, it would, in the AP test, it would say justify your answer. And you would say, that would get you zero points, that the value for delta G is negative. He said, because my teacher told me it was. You could say, because my teacher told me that a negative value for delta G meant it was spontaneous. You'd be fine there. Okay, we alright with this? Alright, there are most likely some practice problems in your textbook on these, and three or four questions in the homework section that you could find and work on. Once again, there's no homework for chapter 19 assigned. So I will have your test graded over the weekend. I can grade and pay attention to 10 hours of video stream people talking to me. So anyway, because I'm 